What is up guys, Fado82 coming at you with a weekly Rust update. I always really enjoy making these update videos, and this is a big one this week, so we're going to get right into it. So right off the bat guys, you'll notice that I'm looking at some new barricades that have been added into the game. They are not default blueprints, so you will have to find the blueprints for each of them to craft them. And there are three different types. There's a stone barricade, which we're looking at here, which costs 100 stones. There's a sandbag barricade here, which is 150 stones. And there's concrete, which is 200 stones. You cannot stack the barricades on top of one another, guys. So, for instance, you can't stack a block on top of another one. And they're very easy to jump over and to jump up on top of. So, right now, I'm seeing that their primary purpose is going to be used for cover. So, perhaps when you're in a firefight, to duck up, shoot, and then duck back down. I'm seeing that as being its primary use at this point in time. But Rust players are always very creative, and I'm sure that people will use them in different ways. Sticking with the motif of base defenses, guys, you can see that there's now some spikes that have been added into the game. These are wooden floor spikes. They are also not a default blueprint. They cost 300 wood per set of floor spikes to make, and they cannot be placed on foundations at this point in time. With that being said, you can put foundations over the spikes, so be aware of that. It's a method to maybe create some very inventive traps for players. Rust is a game that's always about mitigating against raiders, and you'll certainly want to use the spikes in your endeavor to do so. Uh, you'll notice with a twig material, if we go ahead and shoot that out, we would have fallen on the spikes. So it's going to be really cool to see how players utilize this. As always, guys, you don't have to just place it around your base. You could use it to place around somebody else's base. You know, uh, you do need to be in the building allowed area. You could also put it in between rocks, in bushes. So watch out for these things in game, guys. They're going to be a bit of a game changer, and you're going to have to be on your toes. This week's iteration of Rust has brought with it some of the biggest changes to gunplay that we've seen in a long time, and it's a bit of a game changer. So there's now a new type of ammunition in the game called a high-velocity round or high-velocity ammunition. It's available for all gun types in the game. It costs 20 more gunpowder per round to make a high velocity round than it does for a normal round. So it does tend to be a bit costly because 20 gunpowder does add up. But the benefit of having the high velocity rounds is that they travel farther, they do slightly more damage, and they have less bullet drop. When you're selecting a weapon and you have the two different variants, you can hit R to reload, and you can select either the normal type or the high velocity ammunition type and this is the same for any gun that you're holding we happen to be holding a new custom submachine gun here we're going to go ahead and we're going to test out the difference in the rounds so you'll notice down here guys that there's uh, some twig foundations and walls out there in the water on an island and we're going to go ahead and see if we can reach it with the normal uh, pistol ammunition normal submachine gun ammo we can't quite reach it so we're going to go ahead and we're going to change over to the high velocity ammo, which is said to travel farther. And we're going to go ahead and see if aiming at it, we can reach that particular target over there. So we've switched over. We've now loaded the magazine with the high velocity ammo. And we're going to go ahead and shoot out there. And you'll notice that we can take out those particular tiles, which is really cool. Um, so it does definitely make a difference, guys. We can definitely tell there's a difference because we couldn't even touch that particular part uh that particular structure with the normal pistol rounds the drop was was too great so there's definitely uh, definitely a game changer and there's definitely a difference between the rounds uh, really good stuff really fun to use and i'm really excited to see where it goes again guys 20 gunpowder more per round and you can go ahead and use it for any of the gun types in the game. really amazing work changes to the rockets guys the rocket launcher now supports three different variants of rockets it supports the same rocket that we've all known and loved for the past few weeks which is the most powerful of the three it also supports a high velocity variant of the rocket which is faster moving and goes for a longer distance but does sacrifice some of the damage and then there's now a smoke rocket which is a work in progress that's why it says wip by it and that emits a thick visible smoke that obstructs vision let's go ahead and test it out with the high velocity rocket You'll notice that it moves at a little bit faster pace, but the damage on it is a little bit lower. And last but not least, guys, there's the Eoka pistol. It now supports any type of ammo that you have in your inventory. The damage is not scaled based on the ammo, and it's still a wildly inaccurate weapon, but it now has more options in terms of the damage. If you guys are interested in crafting the new rockets, the high velocity rocket will run you 80 metal fragments, 200 gunpowder, and 10 explosives. And the smoke rocket will run you 80 metal fragments, 200 gunpowder, and 25 low-grade fuel. And guys, with the patch, a headshot sound has been added back in the game. So there's a distinctive sound when you hit a player in the head, which you'll notice 
and it's pretty cool and there's now a blood mist effect in the game as well so you'll notice when you're hitting a player and you can see that you're tagging them so it's a little more visible and easier to see we're on a creative server so there is god mode enabled so no need to get nervous nothing weird's going on here but very good stuff and a much needed addition to the game Supply signals are back in the game. If you're familiar with them from Legacy, they're essentially a smoke canister that calls in an airdrop, your own personal airdrop that's going to land in the general vicinity of the smoke screen. It is not craftable and it is not something that you can research. So when you find it, hold on to it and make sure you use it in an area where there's not a lot of other players around. Once that airdrop starts coming in, it's going to draw a lot of attention to your location. And the campfires in the game, guys, now burn a little bit brighter. It's a really cool effect, not a game changer, but it's really awesome. You can see them from farther away, and I think it was a long time coming. It makes the campfires look just all the more better at this point. But that's not the only source of illumination. The long-awaited candle hats have arrived. This was a community item that was voted in by the community, showing how much Face Punch does care about the community's input. And the candle hat costs 30 cloth to make, 10 animal fat, and it gives you about three minutes worth of light when you use it. You can go ahead and toggle it on and off by igniting it and extinguishing it, and you'll notice the flame corresponds to that toggle. It lasts for about three minutes from testing that I've done. It seems to be almost uh, between two and a half and three minutes, and it is something that is not craftable at the start. You need to find a blueprint for it. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs>